Many things in the world are correlated. If you see lightning, you'll likely hear thunder, and ice cream sales will go up as the temperature rises. These are examples of classical correlation. But here we're talking about a different kind of correlation, one that is stranger and less intuitive. We call it quantum entanglement. As we explore this topic, we'll use the Dirac notation introduced in the What is a Qubit video. Be sure to watch that video if you're not comfortable yet with this Dirac notation. Sometimes two classical bits will be in the same state, like zero, zero. This can also be true for two qubits. Sometimes you might see this written as zero, zero using this ket symbol, where the rightmost zero tells us the state of qubit zero, and the one to the left tells us about the state of qubit one. Other times, you might see it written with the states of qubit zero and one written in separate kets like this. As we discussed in our video on what is a qubit, we could represent the state of each one of these qubits on a block sphere. Each one separately would look like this. Of course, the qubits could also be in different states, like shown here. This means that qubit zero is in the state zero, and qubit one is in the state one. If this were the end of the story, we wouldn't need quantum mechanics. We would just describe these states as we describe two classical bits, like zero, zero, or zero, one. But remember that quantum mechanical particles can exist in a superposition of different states at once, like this, for example. Recall from the What is a Qubit video that a superposition of two quantum states can be described by coefficients a and b, which tell us how likely we are to obtain each state in a measurement. And it's also characterized by an additional parameter we call a phase. We can use these coefficients in phase to visualize this state as a vector on the block sphere. This state shown is often denoted as plus, and it's plotted on a block sphere like this. Upon measurement, this particle has a 50% chance of being measured in the zero state and a 50% chance of being measured in the one state. This is different from a classical bit, but we could certainly prepare a classical system that returns a classical bit zero 50% of the time and one 50% of the time. So it's not yet clear how we would measure something radically different from what classical bits can yield. But now consider what happens when you have two qubits, zero and one, and they are both in a superposition in a very specific way. Consider this state. In this state, there's a 50% chance of finding particle zero in the state zero and particle one in the state one. And there's a 50% chance of finding them flipped, qubit one in the state zero and qubit zero in the state one. This does not just mean that we don't know which qubit will be measured in zero and which in one. It means nature doesn't know yet. Still, you know that when we measure, we'll only measure one in the state zero and one in the state one. To understand how strange this is, let's use a classical analogy. Magnets work well. Here I have two tiny magnets, and I'll measure their state by holding them up to a third, larger magnet. I can put them both in the same state, which is an analog of zero, zero, and I can measure. I can put them in different states, and again, I can measure. No problem. But what about this state we talked about before? Let's rewrite it in terms of which direction the little magnetic fields are pointing using arrows like this. This would mean that neither magnet's magnetic field is definitely pointing up, and neither is definitely pointing down but somehow we still know that one will point up and the other will point down when we measure. This is strange. I can't make this with classical magnets. When a quantum mechanical system behaves like this, we say the parts of the system are entangled, meaning the measurement of one part necessarily affects what can be measured about the other part. This could be true of fundamental particles, like electrons in an entangled state, and incidentally, this arrow notation is very common in quantum mechanics to describe exactly that. Or, we could have entanglement of two qubits, 
which is more likely to be written like this. Entanglement is so important to physics and quantum computing that simple examples have been given special names. This state is commonly called psi minus, and it's one of four critically important entangled states called Bell states. Take a look at each of these and note that in all cases, neither qubit is in a definite state, and a measurement of one qubit affects the state of the other. Consider, for example, phi plus. This is made up of a superposition of two states, 0, 0, and 1, 1. If we make a measurement of qubit 0 and find it in the state 0, then there is no chance at all that the state of the system is 1, 1, since that means both states are in the state 1. That means this system is definitely in the state 0, 0. So we instantly know that qubit 1 is also in the 0 state, even though we only measured qubit 0. That still works even if the qubits are physically separated. That is entanglement. We're not limited to entangling just two qubits. Consider this state. This is also obviously entangled. If I measure qubit 0 and I find it in the state 1, then I know that the system is in the state 1, 1, 1. And I know the other two qubits are also in that same state 1. But this doesn't mean that every multi-qubit state is entangled. Consider this state, for example. It looks very similar to the other states we've discussed, and so you might think at first that the two qubits are entangled. But notice what happens if I measure qubit 0. I'll find that it's in the state 1, since it is in the state 1 in both parts of the state vector. So in finding that qubit 0 is in the state 1, I haven't really limited the space of possible states for qubit 1. It could still be a 0 or a 1, each with 50% probability. What if instead I measured qubit 1 and found it to be in the state, say, 0? Well, then I would know that the whole system is in the state 0, 1. And I would know that qubit 0 was in the state 1. But I already knew that, didn't I? That was the only possibility from the very beginning. So the measurement of one qubit did not affect the possible measurements on the other qubit in this case. The qubits in this state are not entangled. There are many ways of creating entanglement in different experimental contexts. In the last part of this video, let's focus on how to create entanglement on a quantum computer using Qiskit. When you create a quantum circuit using Qiskit, by default, all qubits are initialized to the state 0. A Hadamard gate on qubit 0 will put it in a superposition state like this. We're free to rewrite this, like this. And now if we apply a controlled not or C not gate using qubit 0 as the control and qubit 1 as the target, then whenever qubit 0 is in the 1 state, we flip the state of the other qubit. And when qubit 0 is in the 0 state, we do nothing. This gives us this state. And congratulations, you've just made a Bell state, specifically phi plus. The way entanglement is leveraged in quantum computing is different from algorithm to algorithm, but in general, it is tremendously important and widely used. Together with superposition and interference, quantum entanglement is a key difference between the macroscopic and the quantum worlds that make quantum computing so fundamentally different from classical computing. To learn more about entanglement, check out some of the courses and classroom modules linked below this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.